Good morning. Welcome to Highland Baptist Church. Um, we especially welcome any visitors we have this morning. Not sure if I see any other new faces, although it's kind of hard to recognize some of these days. And uh, like I said before, I hope you're all smiling when you those masks. It's always, it's just so good to get together, even though we have to wear these things. Uh, and it's nice for me to not have to wear while I'm standing here. But uh, just uh, also want to give a special welcome to any uh, visitors we might have online watching with us today. And uh, just thankful that you've taken the time to uh, join us. And we know that that's uh, you know, not something we take lightly, that, you, that you're taking time out of your day. And, and uh, so uh, thank you for joining us. And, and if you are joining us and you wanna get, uh, we want to get to know you better, you can go online. And uh, you can go to our contact page on the uh, Highland Baptist, uh, I'm sorry, hbcfitchburg.com, and uh, you can send us an email and let us know who you are, and we'd love to get back in touch with you. See everybody here. Uh, why don't we stand this morning for a call to worship? We're going to be reading from Psalm 105. You brought your, your Bible with you, and you want to turn and read along. Psalm 105, we're going to be reading verses 1 through 5 this morning. Starting in verse 1, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon His name. Make known His deeds among the peoples. Sing to Him. Sing psalms to Him. Talk of all His wondrous works. Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His face evermore. Remember his marvelous works, which he has done. Remember his marvelous works, which he has done. It's really important for us to remember this morning. Again, with everything that is going on within our world, our society, in our town, we can always remember the marvelous works of God and everything that he's done and everything that he is going to do, despite everything that is going on this morning. We always have a reason to sing and rejoice. First and foremost, our salvation is secure. We have a God who is always pouring out His love, grace, and mercy on us. A God that is always promising to provide for us. A God who cares about everything going on in our lives. A God who knows the hairs on every person's head. A God who can sympathize with everything that's going on in our lives. So we have so... So much to rejoice about this morning. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of bringing us here. Thank you, Lord, for those who have come out, for keeping them safe. We pray that your Holy Spirit would do a great work within our midst this morning. Lord, that you would use your word to change us. Lord, help us to be a people, a church body that is always rejoicing and thanking you and and, and just being joyful, Lord, in everything that you've done already, everything that you're going to continue to do because of who you are. Thank you, Lord, for who you are, for your holiness, for your steadfast love, mercy, and grace. Thank you, Lord, that in crazy times and everything that is going on, Lord, we can lean on you for hope, that you are steadfast, that you are unchanging. Great is your faithfulness to us all the time. So we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We come here this morning to worship you, to see your face. And we come to be changed by your word, challenged by your word this morning. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. But one of the things that going on during you know this t difficult time that we're going through is it's it's really a, a a time where I think we have a lot of lamentations uh, lamenting over things that are you know that are happening in, in our lives and in the lives and around us that we see um, and one of the things I lament and it's not the most important thing but I do lament not being able to sing I really love to sing to, and especially together corporately but through all these lamentations, I think we can also see 
some positive things that are, that, that are coming out of this. And uh, one of the things I would say about not being able to sing is if you, a lot of times when we're singing, we focus so much on the beautiful music that we, we can miss the message in there. So I, I'm, I'm actually kind of happy something now that we can read some of these great hymns and take away the, the music for, us, for a time and, and really focus on the words. And uh, with the, the study we've been doing is uh, focusing on you know, the missionary journeys of Paul, of course, in, in the early church, including the missionary journeys of Paul. And I've just been really inspired by Paul, just someone who, who just has consecrated his life to the Lord. And this song, while it's not specifically about Paul, it, just, it, it really makes me think of him as I'm, as I'm reading it. But, of course, it's really asking us to consider this as well. And, and it's, uh, the, the hymn is titled Consecration, and it's by Mildred E. Howard. Since Jesus gave his life for me, should I not give him mine? I'm consecrated, Lord, to thee. I shall be wholly thine. I care not where my Lord directs. His purpose I'll fulfill. I know he everyone protects who does his holy will. Though he may call across the sea, with Jesus I will go, and tell the lost of love so free, till all his power may know. My home and friends are dear to me, yet he is dearer still. In my affections first he'll be, and first his righteous will. My all, O Lord, to thee I'll give, accepted as thine own. For thee alone I'll ever live, my heart shall be thy throne. My life, O Lord, I give to thee, my talents, time, and all. I'll serve thee, Lord, thine own to be, I'll hear thy faintest call. Amen. This morning we're going to be continuing in our series, Empowered and Unstoppable. So we have... Our, our lesson today, and then we have one more next week that Brother uh, Tim McLaughlin is, uh, McLaughlin is going to bring us through, and then we're going to be finished in our, in our series. And um, I don't know about, uh, about you all, well, I know a lot of you, you've messaged me, and you've, you've said that you've been learning a lot, been convicted in the series. I'm so glad about that. It's been the same thing for myself personally, right? Everything that we've been, that we've been going through has been just as much for myself as it's been for all of us corporately. Been so challenged, as, as Brother Foster was telling us, uh, with Paul. You know, we've been focusing, focusing in on Paul the last few weeks. And uh, so today we're going to be finishing up uh, with his third missionary journey. All right, but before we get there, uh, we're going to recap a little bit of what we learned uh, last week. Last week we had learned that sometimes... The Holy Spirit changes things up on us. Sometimes the way we do ministry changes. Teams change, plans change, strategies change. And we talked about how we need to be willing to be molded by Christ and follow the leading of the Spirit and to go along with some of those changes that may come about. We talked about how we don't always understand the entire scope of the work that we do here on earth. But we need to also understand and believe that God is going to accomplish greater things than we can ever imagine through us as long as we are led by Him. God is going to take what we do and multiply that. And we don't always see that within our lifetime, but we know that God is going to do something great there. And we talked about taking the next step, that sometime God, sometimes God closes a door because He's opening a new one. And so the question is, when God opens that new door, are we ready and willing to take the next step and go through that door? So this applies to, to us as a church body as a whole, but it also applies to us on an individual level. God is doing things in our individual life. We all have different contexts. We live in different areas. We have different people within our circle of influence. We all have different spiritual gifts. We all have different talents and abilities. So God is going to do different things through us. And that's, that's great. That's beautiful. We have 
we have diversity in how we are reaching the lost. But God is, is always closing and, and opening new doors, so we have to always be willing and ready to simply go with the flow, go with what the Spirit is leading us to do. So this morning, we're gonna, on the third missionary journey, we're going to be in, uh, it takes place in Acts 18, starting in verse 24, goes all the way to uh, chapter 21, about verse 14. Uh, we're not, of course, going to read, uh, read the whole thing. That would take a little bit too long, but we are going, going to hone in on, uh, on a particular area, which we'll get to. But the focus for today's message is just one point. I have one point for us this morning, and, I, and I'll explain why. But what we're going to focus on today and be convinced of today is that there is power in Jesus' name. There is great power in Jesus' name. So a little bit of context about this third missionary journey is that Paul is now traveling back to the churches he planted on his first missionary journey. Because remember, him and Barnabas were supposed to do this on the second missionary journey, but then they got into that dispute where Barnabas said, hey, I, I want to take along John Mark. And Paul said, no, 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 we're going to leave that guy behind. He left us. I don't... And so they ended up splitting. And so Paul didn't actually get to travel back to those churches that he had planted on the first journey. He ended up, God used that situation for him to go a completely different avenue, start different churches, change the strategy up. So now Paul is saying, okay, now it's time for me to go back uh, to the brethren um, that I haven't seen in a while from the first missionary journey. And this journey ends differently than the last two. You see, the last two missionary journeys, Paul always ended up back at Antioch, at his home church, where he would tell his, his, his church, hey, these are the great things that God is doing. But this journey, he, didn't, he never made it back to his home church. Uh, it ends with Paul returning to Jerusalem to be imprisoned, to be arrested. And it was actually prophesied, right? As he was on his way back, Paul runs into a man who had daughters who um, had the gift of prophecy. And, uh, and he was told that you're going to be bound up. And so he never made it back home to deliver everything that he had done. So what we're going to do this morning is before we get into everything, we're going to read um, in chapter 19. Let me actually uh, flip there myself. I'm going to be going through verses 1 through 19. This is the the passage that we're going to be focusing in on this morning. Starting in verse 1, And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus, and finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you baptized? So they said, Into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were about twelve in all. And when he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some had hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannius. And this continued for two years so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call in the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits saying, We exercise you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, who did so. 
And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit to whom this here evil spirit was, leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. This became known both to all the Jews and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many who had be believed came confessing and telling their deeds. Also, many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted up the value of them, and it totaled 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Some great, amazing things going on in this one passage of Scripture on this part of the missionary journey. So much power we have in Jesus' name. Putting together this message... And just really praying and wanting the Spirit to, of course, always lead the way. Just really feeling the Spirit leading me to just focus on this one point, that there's power in Jesus' name. And I'm going to explain why. This past week, as you guys have all seen, those of you who watch the news, keep up with things going on in our society, a lot is, there's a lot is going on. And I'm seeing this one word pop up on a lot of platforms. Social media, news networks, YouTubers, podcasters, etc., whatever else you can think of. There seems to be a lot of discussion and talk about this one word. And that word is change. There's been a lot of talk this week in our society about change. Our country and our society is desperate for change, and rightfully so. They should be. This country, we're made up of imperfect, sinful people. And there are things in our society that are far from perfect and even unfair. So yes, we need change. I think we we can all agree that we need change. Our society is desperate for it. What I've also seen and and heard this past week are the varying opinions about and ideas on, okay, what exactly is the root cause for what's going on in in our world, in our society, and how do we actually go about accomplishing this change? There's been a lot of talk, varying opinions about this. So this morning, let us, as the church, be reminded of the truths that God has given us in His Word. Let us be reminded this morning that when a person treats another person with disrespect because of the color of their skin over the content of their character, they have a heart problem and they need to be made new. When a person treats another person with disrespect simply because of the badge on their uniform, they also have a heart problem and need to be made new. When a person sits idle and does nothing while injustice is occurring, they also have a heart problem and need to be made new. When a person begins to hate another person for simply having a difference of opinion, they also have a heart problem and need to be made new. When a person assumes the content of someone's character based on their economic status, gender, sexual orientation, profession, religion, skin color, race, ethnicity, and whatever else they can think of, they also have a heart problem and need to be made new. Are you guys catching on with me this morning? Lastly, when a person chooses bitterness over forgiveness, wrath over mercy, and vengeance over grace, they too have a heart problem and need to be made new. Our society has major heart problems. All of us who are here, if we've called on the name of Jesus at one point of our lives to be our Savior, we too had heart problems, and we still do. We're still getting over ourselves. 
We are all sinners in need of a Savior and transformation. Education, regulations, laws, rules, guidelines, accountability, these are all great things. Right? Our society is talking about changing a lot of these things. That's great. We should be having these conversations. They are great tools that we should utilize. But let's remember, these tools can only change people's behavior. They can never change a person's heart because only Jesus can do that. Amen. That's the root cause of our problems in our world today, is hard hearts. But in the power of Jesus' name, he can do that. Only Jesus can melt the heart of stone and make us new creatures. Amen? Amen. Only Jesus can give us hope, and only Jesus can bring peace to this chaos and give us the true change that we're seeking. So the church of God better first believe this for ourselves, and then we can bring this message to the world. It's been very difficult. It's been very, it's been very difficult um, just listening to some of my brothers and sisters in Christ, various churches and, and things like that, start talking about everything that's going on, which is great. And of course, we're all on the same page. There's some horrific things happening and we need change. But where is Jesus in all this? Right? How come, we're, how come we're talking as though we have answers outside of Jesus? I, I just don't understand that. Right? You see, because I expect the world to come up with their own solutions. That's what they're supposed to do. They're trying to come up with a way to change things. So I'm not surprised when they, with, with their ideas. I, I expect that from the church of God, from those who, who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus needs to be number one on our priority list for change. And like I said, all these other things that we're talking about, education, regulations, laws, God, those are all great things that we should also utilize in tools, but Jesus needs to be the center point of everything. He needs to be the message that we bring to this world. It's not just about changing behavior, it's about changing a person's heart. And at the end of the day, I, I want the church to understand that even if we accomplish change in our society, even if we, if we bring fairness across the board and, and we see justice happening, if people are still dying in their sins because they don't have Jesus Christ in their life, then we have still failed. Yeah. We have still failed. The devil is, is, is trying to distract us right now. He is trying to distract the church from what they should be doing. And again... I, I, I was out there, too, as part of this, this march for all the injustice. I want to be out there. I want, and we should be out there supporting our brothers and sisters who are going through this. But let's not forget, we got to bring the message of Jesus Christ to this situation. Let's not get distracted. Let's not forget the ultimate mission of the church and forget the source cause of what's going on and how we ultimately see that change. So this morning, within our text, we're going to see five examples in our text of the power that is found in Jesus. Starting in Acts 19, uh, verses 4 through 7, right, we're reading about a situation where Paul comes upon a group of, of, of believers. And these believers, you have to back up uh, a little bit um, to chapter 18, but Apollos, a great man, uh, who was familiar with John the Baptist, he was a great teacher, right? And he was, he was teaching him everything that he had learned from John the Baptist, right? And to give us a little refresher, John the Baptist was simply somebody who was prophesying about Jesus, the, the one to come, right? Repent of your sins because Jesus is coming. And he was pointing people to Jesus. Now, Apollos didn't know Jesus, right? He knew John the Baptist, so he was teaching these people great things, right? He wasn't leading them astray, but he didn't get to Jesus because he didn't know Jesus. So when Paul comes, that's why he says, well, did you receive the Holy Spirit? And they said, we don't even know who the Holy Spirit is. What are you talking about? Because they didn't know Jesus. So the, Jesus was, because of Jesus, they now had the power of the Holy Spirit within them. That's why Paul rebaptized them. 
right? Because they, they, needed, they didn't know Jesus. Jesus made the difference. It was the power that was in Jesus' name now that those disciples had the Holy Spirit. And after they had the Holy Spirit, we see that they started prophesying and speaking in tongues, right? Which were, were signs for them that they had received the Spirit. It was Jesus who was the difference. The power that is in Jesus' name. Acts 19, verse 11 and 12. This is where we start getting into some, <laughs> into some crazy stuff. Unusual mir- they, I love how the scriptures say unusual miracles, right? Because this is very unusual, the stuff that's going on here. Handkerchiefs and aprons. So, right? so a handkerchief and apron that, came, that touched Paul were then used to go, here, here you go, this handkerchief touched Paul, and all of a sudden people are getting healed, and demons are coming out of people. And it's not anything to do with Paul. It has everything to do with the power that's in Jesus that is within Paul because of the Holy Spirit. And then, moving forward, we also see a crazy scenario where people start going out, right? Um, these Jewish exorcists, and they're seeing Paul and the disciples have power over demons, so they want to go do the same thing. But they don't have the power of Jesus living within them. And what happens is they try to exorcise a demon, and the demon says, I know Jesus, I know Paul, I have no idea who you are. Right? They didn't have this, the Holy Spirit living within them. So they got beat up by a demon. They left naked and running, running back. Uh, imagine, <laughs> I was just like, when I read this, I laugh because, man, how do you explain that scenario to your wife when you get home, <laughs> right? Uh, babe, I know uh, what you're thinking. And uh, I got beat up by a demon today. Like, what? <laughs> That's the book of Acts. Unusual things but it's because they didn't have the power of Jesus, you see? They were trying to go on their own power and and use the name of Jesus, but they didn't have the power living within them, so it didn't work. Moving on, and and later, a few more verses, chapter 19, verses 13 through 20, Jesus changes the hearts of people in Ephesus who had practiced magic. And it got to the point where so many people accepted Jesus that they took their sorcery books and they burned them. And I like how the scripture points out the value of them, 50,000 pieces of silver. Now, a lot of people argue, you know, it's really worth this much, it depends on the coin. Regardless, it was a lot of money that went down the drain and burned because they had, the power of Jesus changed their hearts. And so they took their books, which they could have sold to somebody else and made up their money, but no, they burned them because of the power that's in Jesus' name that changed their hearts. Love that story. In chapter 19, verses 23, 34, we're still in in Ephesus. The local silversmith is upset because he's losing business, because he makes little idols... And now so many people are being changed by the power of Jesus that no one's buying his idols. He's losing business. So he, he, he gets this, everyone riled up and he's saying, hey, what is going on? So now we have all these people in an amphitheater and they're yelling, going crazy. Great is Diane of the Ephesians. Can you imagine that? So many people are being changed by Jesus, that somebody's, the local idol maker is going out of business because there was great power in Jesus' name. And then I, I, can't, I didn't want to leave this out. This technically didn't happen in Ephesus, but in chapter 20, verse 7 and 12, I'll actually, I'll, I'll just read it real quick. Now, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. And there were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. And in a window sat a certain young man named Eutychus, 
who was sinking into a deep sleep. He was overcome by sleep, and as Paul continued speaking, he fell down from the third story and was taken up dead. I hope, I hope as a preacher that never, I'm never put in that scenario where I'm preaching so long that somebody falls asleep from a you know, balcony or something. And hope I'm never in that scenario, but hey, book of Acts, a lot of crazy things are happening. But Paul embraced him and said, Do not trouble yourselves, for this life is in him. He was raised from the dead for the power that's in Jesus' name. Jesus has the power to take somebody who is dead, physically dead, or dead in their sins, and bring them to life. What happened in Ephesus can happen right here in Fitchburg. It can happen in communities all over our country and all over the world. Simply because there is, a, there is power in Jesus' name. Let us not fall into the trap of thinking that we have more wisdom in, than God and come up with solutions to our world's problems that don't include Jesus. Or not just don't include Jesus, but aren't centered around Jesus. Our society in general does not have the power of Jesus. And so what we are seeing is simply the, the fruit of a society that is devoid of Christ. That's devoid of the power that's found in Jesus. Hard hearts. And let us not forget that even though we have placed our faith in Jesus and He has made us new creatures, we would have no idea where we would be without Him. No idea. Without Jesus, we're capable of doing some pretty rotten and horrific things in this, in this life. We're all born sinners by nature. So the application for this message this morning is just simple. Let us leave here as a church body in one accord this morning. Let's be convinced of the great power that is found in Jesus' name. And let us be convinced that our society, more than ever, they need Jesus. Yes, we need changes within our government, within our education, within our police force, whatever else you want to add. But more than anything, our society needs Jesus. They need the gospel. They need to hear that we are all sinners in need of a Savior, that we are all need to be reconciled to God. That if we have not placed our faith in Jesus Christ, the Scripture says the wrath of God is upon us, that we are enemies of Him. But God loves us so much that He sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross and pay the penalty for our sin. And that all we need to do to be reconciled to God is place our faith in Jesus Christ. Repent of our sins and place our faith in Jesus. Because He is the only one who can save us and who can change us. And when we do that, God will, continue, God will start a process of changing us. Of molding us. Of melting our hearts of stone. I don't care how far someone is in their sin. I don't care how racist somebody is. Jesus can reach that person and he can change that person. That's what we need in our society. That's what the church needs to be focused on. We need to see hearts changed. And we need to remember only Jesus can do that. All these other things we're talking about are great. They can change behavior, but we need to see heart changed. We need to see people place their faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. As we go out this week, as you're conversing with people, coming in contact with people, maybe some of these conversations are going to come up. Bring the gospel with you. Bring the gospel with you. There is power in the words of this book. This book is sharper than a two-edged sword. And there is something special when when you just start reading this book to people and you start talking about the love of Jesus Christ. 
That's what we need to go out and do this week and be convinced of the great power that's in Jesus' name. The great things that happen in the book of Acts are not, it's not like they're unrepeatable. Right? We have the same power. The same Holy Spirit that was with Paul is with us today in 2020 here at Highland Baptist Church. So let's go out in, in the power of Jesus. Let's bring Jesus to our society. Let's stand alongside our brothers and sisters who are faced with injustice, who are hurting, who just simply need somebody to empathize with them and love on them and care for them and know that they are supported and loved and heard. Let's go out and thank those, especially within our communities in Fitchburg, our police officers who are doing a great job, who put their lives on the line every day. I have many family members who are in the police force. They are great people. And every day they leave their house, they don't know if they're going to come back. So let's make sure we're loving on them as well and thanking them and bringing Jesus to them as well. Let's make sure we are part of the change within our society, that we are at the table having these conversations, that we're not just at home acting like nothing is going on. But let's take Jesus with us. Let's take the gospel with us. That's the ultimate source for change this morning. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for your word and the power that is in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for changing us. Thank you, Lord, that there is no heart too far from you. Thank you, Lord, that our salvation is not in our own goodness and in our own works, because none of us would be saved if that was the case. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Lord, thank you that we can look to you for hope. Thank you, Lord, that we can go out with the, the one true source of change, Lord. Thank you for the truth that we have. Lord, help us to be bold going out this week, to love on others, to minister to others, and to bring the gospel message to them, Lord. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that you give us, that empowers us. Thank you, Lord, again, that we are in part of a church that is empowered and unstoppable. Help us to be the change in our society, right here, starting in Fitchburg, and then moving forward from there. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our benediction... If you have your Bible with you, we're going to be in Philippians chapter 2. We're going to read verses 9 through 11. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Why don't we stand together as we read this. Therefore God has also, has also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. As one day, whether people believe or not, every knee is going to bow. Every knee. And every tongue is going to confess that it, Jesus is Lord. But the difference is going to be some have placed their faith in Him and some have not. And it's our job as the church to make sure that when that day comes that the Lord would look on Highland Baptist Church of Fitchburg and say that we are faithful in doing His work. And that there are people who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ because of the people here and the ministry going on here. Amen.